Good morning. I'm Suzanne Merritt, and as part of the building committee, we're so excited to share with you this morning some of what we've been working on. In our first slide, you'll see the picture of our property on George Ritchie Road. And to a lot of people, it's just going to look like trees and dirt. To put to, but to us as a committee and to you, our church family, this looks like the dream of our future property as we prepare to move out that direction. Uh, we see a property where all ages will come together to worship and study the Bible and celebrate and fellowship and serve our community. We're thankful for this prime property. It's about 20 acres. It's situated right on George, which, R George Ritchie Road, which is such a new and uh, really already busy roadway in North Longview. I'd like to introduce to you our building committee members, Davina Aiken, Daryl DeBoard, Lauren Leviton, Ryan Nunley, Malcolm Palmer, and Meredith Steele. We consider it a great privilege and a huge responsibility to represent you as part of this building committee. We've spent time together praying, meeting with church staff, meeting with church leaders. We've met with architects, builders, experts in the area. And we're excited today to share with you some of the work that's come through all of that. The purpose of our committee, we want to review that with you just a little bit. Um, we, our committee provides oversight in management of the OHBC building program as defined by the church staff and church leadership and as ratified by you, the church congregation. We understand the importance of working together with all of you to develop this dream and we're really looking forward to having your input as we go forward. I get to give you a quick refresher of the master plan that you saw last year. And in this one, you see that overall master plan, site plan, with all of the different phases on our property. This has been the starting point for the building committee. And in a little bit, you'll hear more from Ryan about where we've gone from this starting point. But this picture shows the overall site plan as recommended by the master planning committee and approved by our church. You can see where it sits uh, on the property. The property has a slight rise from George Ritchie and that building will sit at the top of that rise. Very beautiful views. And it is, isn't it wonderful that there's all these beautiful oak trees on this property uh, that will soon be Oakland Heights Baptist Church. We also want to show you the original overall floor plan, again, of all of the phases finished on this property. And this is what the Master Planning Committee envisioned and presented last year. Um, we started, we were very, very uh, determined to have a large common area where all of our other ministry areas would flow through and into. We wanted this for uh, church uh, functions, for church fellowships, worship time, Bible study, for celebrations, and uh, all sorts of church um, activities together, as well as just a congregating point. And so you can see that on this on this. Uh, overall floor plan, uh, the round uh, yellow commons area. If we move uh, clockwise with that, you can see uh, you can see in the green and the blue our children's and preschool area. Up at the top of that, you see contemporary worship area in the orange. Our uh, uh, student ministry and adult education facilities, office area, and down there at that lower bottom you see our classic worship area. And our next slide shows the exterior view of this original master plan. Uh, you can see the covered entryway, that's the outside view of the classic worship area, and you can see on down to some of the education areas as well. We also want to re, uh, refresh you a little bit on our phase one floor plan in the next slide. Uh, this is again the beginning of the building committee where we started. You can see the yellow will be uh, that common area that will serve as worship area. Um, you see the purple down at the bottom will be uh, the space for our, our adult areas. 
Uh, we have in the red a wonderful multi-purpose room that can be adapted for all ages and all different types of activities. Uh, on there at the end, on the left side, that uh, covered play area. The blue area has our children's and preschool areas, and there's even some covered indoor and outdoor play areas. We wanted to make sure that um, phase one includes enough space for all of our different ministries that uh, will be there for Sundays and for Wednesdays. And this is the exterior view of that phase one facility. You can see the covered walkway, the worship area, um, and on down you know, over with the uh, covered play area as well. So we wanted to review the scope of the facility design. Um, the charge was given to the master planning committee uh, that the entire church body should be able to utilize phase one on our property for all of our church programs on Sundays and Wednesdays. So that was given to the master planning committee and then it was also given to us as a building committee. We have worked from that concept. We've been using this, uh, we've, we've based all of our plans on being able to accommodate um, our programs out there. This would include on Sunday morning, all of our small groups for all ages, classic and contemporary worship, uh, seasonal small groups, our children's, uh, preschool, our student ministries on Sundays. And on Wednesdays, it will include uh, more at midweek, our children's and student ministries, orchestra and choir rehearsal. It's important to the us that we have space for all of our ministries on these days and plenty of room for them to grow and flourish in this new facility of phase one. Recently, as a church, uh, we have uh, agreed and approved to look into selling our Judson Road facility. And as that develops, uh, we'll be looking at how that will affect and impact our phase one plans. So I have got the chance to review with you uh, the plans that the master planning committee started, the church approved, and the building committee has been working from. Um, Ryan's going to share with you where we've gone from these starting points. So I want to say thank you for the honor of serving on this committee and working with all of you to develop the stream. Look forward to seeing where we get to go from here. And I'll turn it over to Ryan. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ryan Nunley, and I'm excited to be able to share with you this morning. So Suzanne just gave you a refresher of the original phase one design, and I'll be sharing with you an updated phase one design. Um, I want to begin by describing the steps and the process that we as a building committee um, have taken so far leading up to the phase one uh, updated phase one design. We began our work by selecting and utilizing the non-contract pre-construction pre-construction services of RLM General Contractors of Longview and Fitzpatrick Architects of Tyler. In the past, our church has had favorable experiences uh, with both of these companies. Uh, you may recognize the names as RLM helped us with the repairs when strong winds blew off our steeple, and Fitzpatrick Architects was the company we worked with in developing our master plan. The building committee started with the original phase one uh, facility plan from the master planning committee, and RLM provided a construction uh, a cost projection based on the original design. Afterwards, the building committee investigated several value engineering modifications to reduce the cost with the help of RLM and Fitzpatrick Architects. Fitzpatrick Architects then incorporated these modifications into an updated design. And finally, RLM provided an updated cost projection based on this updated design. So I'd like to share with you some of the uh, value engineering modifications that we made to the original phase one design. First, we lowered the overall building height by about five feet. We changed the worship space from being round to square. We reduced the length of the south canopy, which is the main covered entrance into the building by about 50%. And we reduced the overall exterior glass by about 50%. And that reduction was primarily made um, around in the worship area. 
And in total, these modifications saved us over $400,000. So uh, like the next slide will show you an updated phase one floor plan. Um, you, you can see the change in the worship center from the uh, round design that Susan showed to the uh, square design that you see here. By doing this, we were able to gain some additional space in the foyer areas, as well as some much needed additional storage space without significantly increasing the square footage of the building. You can also see that the covered entry area was reduced by 50%. We believe this area will still be more than adequate to meet our needs. Um, in this updated design, the preschool and children's area and other educational spaces, as well as the covered outdoor areas were not changed or affected. And in the next slide, you'll get to see a kind of a close-up exterior view uh, rendering of the new updated phase one design. On the next slide, you got a nice side-by-side -side comparison here. It's a little hard to see of the original design and the updated design. Um, you'll notice that the change from the round to the square worship center and the elimination of the glass on the sides of the worship center. You can also see that the covered entry area has been reduced by about 50%. Not as noticeable, perhaps, um, the five-foot reduction in the height of the building. We believe that the updated phase one design continues to be a very attractive and welcoming uh, facility. Now, please sit back and relax as we take a video tour of the Phase One facility. Good morning, church. I'm Malcolm Palmer, and I'm excited to be able to continue our report with you this morning. Suzanne has given you, uh, brought you up to speed kind of on uh, kind of a refresher of where we were when the Master Planning Committee, you know, gave us uh, 
their design uh, that they had worked with Fitzpatrick Architects and that we received from them. Ryan brought you up to speed on the steps that we took in going from the original phase one design to an updated phase one design based on value engineering modifications. I will be sharing with you some of our ongoing progress and future plans. I want to begin by sharing with you some information about the phase one project cost. In a few short months, we will be nearing two years since the pandemic began. I say this because the construction industry is still experiencing challenges related to the pandemic. Construction costs have somewhat stabilized. Thankfully, we are no longer seeing the very large increases. But construction costs have not returned to pre-pandemic levels. Construction costs are roughly 30% higher than when the pandemic began. We are not ready to share a total project cost yet, since we may be making some further modifications to our design. We plan to be able to share our total project cost in early 2022. I would likely like to briefly touch on our ongoing and future progress. Over the last month, we have been receiving input from several members of the OHBC staff for suggested improvements. For instance, we received the suggestion that the youth really need a space that they can call their own for the student ministries. The building committee agrees and we are looking uh, at this and other suggested improvements as we continue to refine the phase one design. We have also been looking into what is needed to allow the child development center to utilize the phase one facility. In the future, we also plan to meet with the appropriate teams to get their input. It is likely that any suggested improvements and CDC utilization would increase the phase one cost. We are working towards being able to recommend a proposed design in early 2022. I would like to share some information related to the timeline for the proposed project schedule. After our phase one design is finalized, we will work to prepare construction documents that will take about five to six months. Then we will go out for bids to subcontractors for the various construction disciplines. This should take about one month. After we get the bids, we will obtain a guaranteed maximum cost from the general contractor that we have selected. Construction will then take about 12 months. Thus, the overall timeline for the project will be about 18 to 19 months after the phase one design is finalized. When we are about halfway through the preparation of the construction documents, we will get an updated project cost. At that time, we will present this updated cost estimate to the church to gain project approval. We will do a check step once the bids are received and the guaranteed maximum cost is obtained to make sure we are within the approved cost. Due to the short duration of many of the bids, we will need to be prepared to move quickly from the time that the bids are obtained to when construction begins. I have mentioned before that the building committee has prepared and is maintaining a list of prayer needs for our church that relate to our building program. We take time in each meeting to pray about these needs as well as the individual needs of our building committee members. These prayer needs include helping our building committee members to develop a good understanding of the building processes, the post-pandemic return of our members to their small groups and our worship services, a decrease in the post-pandemic impact on construction plans, ideas to further reduce the phase one facility cost, implementing suggested improvements into the phase one design, the launching of our church's next capital campaign, the work of the budget and finance committee, and 
the faithfulness of our church members in their financial stewardship. Going forward, we ask for your continued prayers. We fully depend on God as our provider to guide us and provide the resources for our new facility. We ask that you join us in praying about the needs that I have shared. We are preparing to recommend a phase one design in early 2022 and be able to share a total project cost at that time. We are excited about what God is doing in our church and to be moving forward with plans he has for our church. I would like to share one final illustration. In an earlier update last summer, I mentioned that the building committee has been reading a new book by Dr. David Jeremiah, Ford, Discovering God's Presence and Purpose in Your Tomorrow. We have been taking some time in our meetings to discuss the main points of each chapter as they relate to the work of our committee. We only have a few chapters left. One illustration that Dr. Jeremiah used to conclude chapter six, titled, Pursue, Chase Your Dream, really caught our attention and moved us. I would like to end our report by sharing Dr. Jeremiah's conclusion to this chapter. Dr. Jeremiah writes, it was impossible for me to write this chapter without thinking of a hero of mine, William Borden. He died before I was born, but his biography moved me like few other books. I want to live by the six famous words famously attributed to him. Borden grew up on Chicago's Gold Coast, where his family owned the Borden dairy farm and business. He was a millionaire while in high school, and that was in the early 1900s when million millionaires were few and far between. He was bright, good-looking, and athletic. He was also a young man who loved the Lord Jesus and had grown in Christ under the influence of his pastor, Dr. R. A. Torrey. Borden's graduation present was a trip around the world, and that's where he developed a passion for spreading the gospel to the regions beyond, especially to China. Later at a missions conference, he was deeply moved to give his entire life to spreading the gospel, including his fortune, which was valued at $50 million. Borden's family supported him in every way, and the day came when he left home and sailed to Egypt for language studies. Everyone who met him was charmed by his humility, his joy and love, and his passion for Christ. Yet within a month, Borden contracted spinal meningitis. He lingered for two weeks, but passed away at the age of 25. The sacrifice wasn't wasted. Borden's story was proclaimed in newspapers around the world, in books and biographies, and from a thousand pulpits. Even today, over a hundred years later, his story grips all who read it. No one knows how many young people, inflamed by his sacrifice, gave their lives to missions. One piece of his legacy is his Bible. When he died, his Bible was returned to his parents. When they opened it, they saw on the flyleaf these words written by Borden, no reserves. These words were written over the date when he decided that he would not take up his role in the family business, but that he would become a missionary. At a later date, he wrote these words, no retreat. And then during his illness and shortly before his death, he wrote these words, no regrets. No reserves, no retreat, no regrets. This is the life of William Borden. That's the way that he lived. And that's the only way to live. You only have one life on earth. Since time doesn't move backward, you have a certain allocation of hours, days, or years left to you. Every one of them from this split second onward is in the future. There's no time to waste. 
You want to live each day without reservations, without retreating from the cause, and with no regrets when you're finished. As we move forward as a church to pursue the dream that God has given us for a new church facility in North Longview, my prayer is that we would chase our dream with no reserves. We are depending entirely on God and what he will do. No retreat. The path is forward, not backward. And no regrets, because we are doing what God is leading us to do. Thank you for allowing us to share our report with you this morning.